Hey guys, it's Megan from Jamunky, and here's my interview with Brenton Thwaites, who plays Henry Turner in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Hi guys, how are you? Hi, how are you? Yeah. Didn't know I'd get applauded on my entry. Oh, yes. <laughs> you did amazing in the film. Of oh, thanks. Do I sit here? In, in yes. This? Yeah, in the, yeah. Chair. in the big Mac Daddy chair. I was just um, talking with Javier, and he was preparing me for this What did he say? <laughs> He's like, where are the daddies, man? <laughs> did he tell you what was said? I said they're at home with the kids. Yes. <laughs> I get it. Great answer. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you oh. become involved in the film? Um, I auditioned a multiple amount of times um, with Rona Crest here in LA. And then I met the directors um, at a place in Venice Beach. And then um, the movie got put on hold for a while. And uh, I re-auditioned about a year later, or a little bit more. And out of that, I met Jerry Bruckheimer and the producers, and, uh, and then I just and then I got cast out of nowhere. What's it like stepping into such, you know, such a role with having you know, Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner as your parents and having to kind of take that story on? I feel like it was kind of easier than not having it because they provided such a backstory for my character. Um, you know, we're, we start the movie... Dead Men Tell No Tales with the boy uh, version of my character basically saying, you know, I believe there's a treasure that can break your curse and I can spend more time with you. Um, and he says, okay, well, if there is, go find Jack Sparrow and he can help you find it. And so I feel like the goal and obligation for my character has already been set. Um, and that, that kind of gives Henry a, a lot more drive and focus for the whole movie. What was it like working opposite Johnny Depp and the iconic Captain Jack Sparrow. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? <laughs> it's, terrifying. it's still terrifying. It's always terrifying. Because you never know what he's going to say or do. So, you know, and it always results in humiliation. For me. <laughs> so it's always, you're always, you know, entering the scene you know, thinking, this guy knows five movies worth of Jack Sparrow, and uh, he's so on the ball, and, you know, um, kind of uh, irreverent and impulsive, you, you know, you kind of, you're just anticipating what he's going to do and say. So, that's great, because, you know, as an actor, it, you know, kind of improves your acting in the sense that you're always, you know, open and free and relaxed to go with the flow, um, but also pretty terrifying. <laughs> Since um, filming, you've become a father? Yes, I have. So what is it like now being, you know, you've done a few Disney films, but having stuff that your baby's going to see one day? Well, it's great being a part of Disney because, you know, it's a studio that really, you know, plays for the younger audiences. And um, I did a movie in 2014. It, uh, 2012, released in 2014, called Maleficent, mm -hmm. which is something I can't wait for my daughter to see. Mm -hmm. um, Pirates may take a while, just because it's quite scary. You know, Maleficent is as well, but um, I know, uh, you know, there's moments of Pirates where I can't even get scared, you know. <laughs> so I think it might take a while, I don't know when, um, maybe till uh, next year when she's two. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ten years. Ten, Body trained. Yeah, I think, <laughs> one, one year at a time. I, I don't even know about letting kids see movies yet. You know. So you came in fifth movie, and you, you know, you're a real newcomer to this whole universe. And do you ever feel like, do they value? You think they valued your input as a newcomer, as an actor, or you know, they're like, oh, we've already done this. We got all this. No, I think they did value my input as an actor, uh, as a newcomer. Um, there were so many different characters coming into this one to make it a fresh new thing, and I think uh, all the old school dudes really wanted to, you know, make it fresh and exciting, and you know, something that they hadn't done before. So Javier coming on board, myself, Kaya, and the two new directors who had prominently done independent films, um, were kind of, you know, supported and encouraged on this one. You were recently named the Breakthrough Performer of the Year. How does that feel? It's great. It's great. So, you know, when I first heard of Comic-Con and that I was, you know, to get that award, I had no idea what it was, to be honest. And, uh, and I did a bit of research and looked at 
the guys that had received that award, you know, in the past five, ten years, and kind of just went, wow, I don't think I'm in that caliber, of, you know, of actor with those guys. Um, but just to be kind of, you know, even considered or, you know, thought of in that same group of actors is really exciting. What was it like when you first walked onto the set like, to see it all? Like, what were you thinking? What were your emotions? I was thinking, wow, it's really rained. Because uh, the, my first day on set, it, it had been pouring for months or weeks. And um, the town of St. Martin, which was uh, a farm town called Maudsland, which was about 20 minutes west of the studio, was covered in mud. You know, everything was... They kind of used it in the movie, which is really cool and dramatic and adds to the dirtiness of the pirates' world. But... Uh, I remember thinking, like, I'm going to have to get some new shoes, you know, because <laughs> I'm s- squelching, and it's like, you know, an hour in, and I'm squelching around. But um, I had a scene where my character Henry is hiding behind a pillar, and he's spying on Jack Sparrow, um, and I remember thinking, wow, what a perfect way to start the movie, you know, to see Jack Sparrow drinking rum in the middle of the street, and a whole a whole parade of red soldiers trying to catch him. The visual effects are amazing. So once the film was put together and you got to see what they did, can you tell us what that was like for you? Well, the visual effects side of things was, for this one, mostly kind of behind the actor's consciousness. You know, uh, in Maleficent, there was a lot of, you know, um, work that we would have to do with our imaginations to, to kind of be specifically creating creatures that weren't there. On Gods of Egypt, we did the same thing. Uh, but on Pirates, we were lucky because, you know, all of Javier's makeup, all the ghosts were there. They looked fantastic. Um, the sets were real. You know, they, they uh, had beautiful set pieces that allowed us to play and, you know, feel like we were actually in the space. Um, the CGI, I guess I was surprised to see Javier's hair, you know. Amazing. Wish I was playing that a little bit more. <laughs> you know, that would be yeah. cool. And his jacket, too. And yeah. his jacket. Yeah. And, just you know, flown. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was mainly in the background, the CGI stuff, um, which great, gave it this great depth of field when you watch it. Um, but for us, we were lucky that we had so much given to us on the day. Yeah. So what's a, like a typical day on set? What does it sort of involve? How long are your days? And a typical day on set for me is I get picked up at 8 o'clock. I you know, get out of the house at 7. I run down for a quick surf. I get out of the water at 8, rush home, I'm half an hour late. (laughs) So my driver speeds down the highway and risks our lives trying to get to work on time. Um, And then I get made up and sit in the trailer for five hours, and then we start working. (laughs) It took five hours for me, guys. Just for, you know, logistics, sets change, and every day there was something crazy happening. um, For this one, they just, they like to give the directors all the tools to play around with. And so we would, we would all come to work, Javier would get, you know, made up, Jeffrey would get in, in makeup, and we would all be ready in case they wanted to do, you know, um, some improvised shot or something. Um, they could kind of use any actor at any time. So it was a cool way of shooting, but it meant that I got better at my guitar very quickly. <laughs> did you bring your skateboard at all? No, I didn't bring my skateboard on this one. Oh, I wish I did, but we were mainly in, like, Rocky Fields and the studio. There was a guy there, the swords master, Thomas Dupont, who had an electric skateboard. Um, and I tried it once, and you could kind of sense the whole studio thinking, get Branton off that skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what happens, but get that kid off that <laughs> skateboard. Or you can't have a broken arm. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Did you do any special training for your role? Just sword fighting. Uh, I had a few hand combat fights that we more or less did on the day and um, the sword fighting stuff we trained three weeks before principal photography. Was there anything else you had to do to get prepared for the wall? It's kind of a period piece because it's about yeah. the 17th and area. It, uh, accent stuff. I had to do a little um, accent work um, but I'd done it many times before so I kind of just slotted right in you know that British RP um, dialect. Yeah. You had a lot of scenes with Johnny Depp. Were there things that uh, you had to find yourself to stop laughing uh, laughing at him? Was he doing things to make you laugh as you were? Everything. Okay. <laughs> Everything. If you, if you guys look closely, me and Kai are 
you know, behind the scenes are like this. <laughs> yeah, just trying not to laugh. So we should expect like a lot of bloopers. Um, yeah, that's right. right. Or like a lot of like looking down in a way. <laughs> <laughs> and like shaking. <laughs> yeah. What is your hope that um, the audience takes away from the film? Um, I just hope they're entertained, you know. Um, this kind of movie with all the genres slotted into this, you know, two hour gap. Um, it's a kind of movie that never loses its drive and has so many action pieces, set pieces, uh, comedic elements, romance, supernatural. There's kind of something for everyone in this movie. Um, so I hope, I hope everyone takes something from it and connects with the characters. Speaking of set pieces, did you take anything from this set? <laughs> if I told it's a, it's you, a I'd safe place. It's a safe place. We're not going to have to. I didn't. But uh, if this ever gets back to the producer... Um, <laughs> I would have liked to have taken a rowboat um, because uh, my mum's in the corner over there. I told her, I told her before we wrapped the movie um, that I would bring a rowboat home and make a veggie garden out of it. Aww. So, guys, um, tweet that to the producer. You know, yeah, tweet, tweet. <laughs> get me my rowboat. It's for your mom. Yeah, it's for my mum. Good cause. How many so, locations did you film at, and did you have a favorite location? We shot at uh, about five or six different locations, mainly the studios. Um, I was talking about St. Martin Square, 20 minutes west of the studios where all the mud was. Um, we shot there for a good month and a half. And uh, we shot in New northern New South Wales at a beautiful beach called Hastings Point for um, our entrance into our entrance into St. Martin's, I think, you know, the coastal element. Um, and my favourite location was up on Hamilton Island, shooting up on the Great Barrier Reef in the wet Sundays. We shot at a, a beach called Whitehaven Beach, which is this beautiful squeaky beach. You know, when you walk on the sand, it squeaks, which is not so good for the sound guy, but um, it's great for effects and it looks beautiful. And uh, I think we all had the most fun that day. Yeah, Javier mentioned that beach. Oh, Javier is like like a five-year-old kid, you know. <laughs> as soon as he finishes seeing him and his mate Juan Carlos stripping off, like jumping in, you know, in the sea, playing and like fighting in the sand. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Will that be in the blooper? We'd love to see that. Hopefully, hopefully they included that. I hope it's in the bloopers reel. <laughs> Thank you. Make sure you subscribe so you check out more interviews from the cast.